I am pleased to welcome our guest of honor, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, co-founder and MD of Hiranandani Group. I would also like to welcome Professor Ajit Kumar Chaturvedi, Director, IIT Roorkee, to this evening. So, on behalf of the entire institute, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani. I think we have all been hearing this name for several decades now. Uh, whenever we used to visit Pawai, IIT Bombay, and the, and the skyline would inevitably remind you of, of this name, Hira Nandani. And since the last one year when this uh, lockdown has happened, and uh, he's also a very familiar face on, on the television shows. And uh, I'm sure that uh, many of us become successful, but very few of us get the kind of success that Dr. Hira Nandani has. And I think his, his iconic success will inspire our students to learn something, uh, something unique. So I'm saying that uh, learning does happen in the classroom and it's like starting an engine. But it doesn't mean that when you go out of the portals of your classroom and the uh, institute, the engine has to stop. In fact, the engine has to become bigger and bigger and more horsepower has to come. And this horsepower can come only with lifelong learning and how you can learn from your experiences. And I think this is what we want to hear today from Dr. Hiranandani, that how our students and all of us can continue learning beyond the four walls of the classroom. I would like to hand over to Dr. Hiranandani. Uh, it's my pleasure and privilege to come to your institution, IIT Roorkee. I've heard a lot about it and the wonderful things that you have been doing. And of course, now you have also won the CII award of the most innovative institute of the year. So heartiest congratulations and best wishes on this award and also many, many awards to come in the future time that we are doing. Uh, being engineering students, obviously, and of such a reputable institute has put a large amount of expectations of people out of the persons who come out of this institute. But lo and behold, talk to the persons who are actually going to take your, give you the employment. And what do they have to say? What do they say about the curriculum or the subject that you are talking about? Or what else is actually required from the students that really counts at the end of the day when you get a job? Yes, you must know your subject like any other professional person must. But over and above that, the expectations have changed. Expectations have changed because the people want you to be skilled, skilled very differently than just the subjects that you are taught about. So you must know how to deal with people, human relationships. You must be able to do negotiation. You must be able to communicate. You must be able to see that your thoughts and ideas are put down the line if you are a leader or up the line to your bosses that you need to do. All this requires different sorts of skill sets that you do need to, uh, uh, to put on. And that is why when you have a program like the one which you are having in Cognizant 2021, it becomes extremely useful to you because you are then being able to imbibe newer skills, which otherwise would not be as a part of the normal communicate. So what is it that really makes the difference when you go out into the world and write and see how you have done your job? May I share certain ideas that I've got in my head, which I want to share and put across to you so that you also can take benefit of what I think has caused some of the successes that I have made and you have been kind enough to mention. The first thing which I have found is that many people say they like their job. Oh, we like the job? Is that really enough? What happens to the persons who actually excel in their job? They actually love, learn to love their job. What do you mean by love the job? job? Job is a job. How can you love that? You can love a person, but how can you be there? Yes, but the truth is that you have to learn to become passionate about your job. 
let's take the projects that I worked on, the real estate project or any other project that we do, the thought process of how these projects must come out. Not only that, how do I really improve on these projects and over a period of years become more skilled into the job that you did. So there are certain thoughts and ideas that I have. The first and foremost idea that I have and I want to share with you is to find things that are done in the world which you would like to emulate. When I started the real estate business, I started looking around and seeing what were the wonderful types of architecture? What are the different types of uh, construction that is done? What are the different ways in which you can perform? When I found something which I liked very much, I actually fell in love with them. And that is how the project which our friend introduced to you about at Pawai, opposite IIT Mumbai, was created. We looked at a design which actually appealed to us. And it did cost us a little more than it would have in the normal circumstances. But we went for it. We went for it because we loved it. We thought it was a good one. And we thought that these are the type of things that we can do. So first and foremost, any subject that you may take. If you're making a production item, let's say you are a mechanical person or an engineer or whatever line of production that you do. How can I make my product even better than what I had originally done? What is it that you can do to improve yourself? How can you really look forward to see what are the innovative ideas outside the normal stream that you were normally working on? All these are sounds. It is really not. And over a period of years, if you start practicing this idea of looking around, and seeing what is the best practices that you can emulate is done. The second thing I want to share with you is what is it that really entrepreneurs do when they want to get into a business. And this is one of the suggestions and one of the things which I did. I came from a medical family. I was the first generation businessman. So I never had any idea of what is the line of business that one should take. Over the period of years when I was studying in BCom, I did my commerce education from Sydney College in Mumbai. And as I went and studied that course, I spent time during my summer vacation to work in various factories. I went into Gwalior I went into Century Mills, and I did uh, looked at the factories, looked at the processes, looked at various ideas and thoughts. After four years, five years, of course, I did my chartered accountancy, but my mind was very clear. I thought the textile business was a good business and we did it. So I started my life, and many, very few people know this, that I started my life in the textile business. And we set up a power loom factory in Kandivali in Mumbai. And on the side side, after a couple of years, I also started in a very small way into the construction business. But the major thing was that over a period of years, we didn't know which way one is going to go. However, we kind of all the time emulated best practices in each trade, whether it was in textiles or it was in construction. So this was a great experience. Whenever you get a chance, please go ahead and do internship in the lines that you would like to take up. You can take up internship, you can take up apprenticeship. I'm sure that the IIT will put you across to many of the companies who will take you for such internships or this. Of course, uh, at the end of it, you would like to have a job and probably you have a placement person who will help you to get into a job. But even in the internship, uh, even in the interim period between two years, one could take up something like an internship or an apprenticeship. The other thing which I find extremely useful for a person to do is to pick up different ideas from mentors. So look up to the persons you have. The person mentor could be your professor. Your mentor could be somebody from business and industry. And 
go and make friends with him and try to find out what he can share with you. Of course, he may not teach you the full tricks of the trade, but even few ideas and thoughts help. Over a period of years, I used to meet all the developers who used to do construction and were leaders in my trade. And I would go and request them to give me some time when I could spend time with them. This was a big learning. And many times people told me little things which became useful in terms of my trade. So try and get mentors in the trade and business that you want to do or in the idea and thoughts that you can do. If you want to do research, you can, of course, have a mentor as a professor or a teacher of your college. And that could be extremely useful to use them in the earlier years so that in the future years, they could guide you in the direction in which you could possibly do a PhD. One of the thoughts which I always had was, what is it that really makes a difference in terms of the direction in which you want to go? I will give you some examples and stories which I'd like to share with you, which I always remember and relate to. One of the thoughts is about, or two of the stories actually, is about Reliance Industries. I remember about 20 years ago, was it 17, 18 years ago, there was a lecture by Mr. Mukesh Ambani and I was and I attended this one where he talked about a mobile phone. And at that time, the mobile phone cost airtime was 33 rupees a minute. I know it sounds uh, strange for people who are of your age and time, but yes, it was so. And he made a statement that we want to make the mobile cost of a mobile phone to be less than one rupee a minute. And everybody thought, oh my God, this is just impossible to do. But it was there in his mind. Over a period of years, all these ideas have come true. But what is it in the crux of the thought that he made? He wanted to see that he had an idea and a thought which was in his mind and over a period of time as technology improved, he utilized that idea in order to create a service which became useful to all. And today, the Reliance and Geo, as you are using it today, is a thought process of an idea of service that he put it across. The other thought is of mine in terms of what I want to share with you is the fact of change or improvement. Over a period of years, I always wondered if one established in business, then, you know, once you've established it, it should run automatically. Improvements will take place and people will manage the business and you don't need to worry about it at all. But the contrary is true. We have to learn, one, to improve ourselves every day, every month, every year. Not only do we have to improve ourselves, but many times we have to actually change the line of business that we are doing. What happened to me? In the beginning, I started with textile and real estate. And over a period of time, I failed in both the businesses. And this was quite early in the day. I was leveraged and I didn't have money. So I, want, I wanted to give up one business. I didn't know which one to give up. I got a notice from the union of the textile business, which insisted on the union wanted a 100% increase in wages. So I gave up the textile business. Maybe otherwise, instead of being in the real estate line, I would have been in the textile line. So I continued the textile line and sold the real estate business, liquidated my debts and moved on. So what does it mean? Businesses will never be stagnant. Ideas will never be stagnant. New thoughts will come up and new ideas will come up where you can make a change in the future that you want to do. So look at the example again of a company called Reliance. 30 years ago, Reliance was only a textile company. 
the may 95% of the business of reliance was textile today after 30 years only 0.1% of the business of reliance is in textiles otherwise it's in petrochemicals it is in refining it is in uh, uh, telecom it is in retail so over a period of time you've had to do a change process that becomes constant in our endeavors that we really need to do it's very interesting because most of the thoughts is establish a business and it will run on the real truth is that we all have to be ready when you get into any profession or any business that we need to constantly do two things one constant improvements learn about the market and if necessary make changes in your business or make changes in the kind of trade that you do so all this becomes extremely important because at some point of time we all reach a comfort zone especially when you have been successful over a period of years so the other factor is learn that in life that you will have to change look at the situation which has taken place today the covid situation so many of the businesses had to close down retail had a big problem restaurants are still closed down hotels travel and tourism is in great difficulty all these factors need repositioning yourself in trade and business for what you do so when you work in the future into the products that you do remember that situations are going to be changing dynamic over a period of years and we need to do sometimes the government policies change where the economic situations changes from the type of policy that they have different new businesses can come up so for instance this covid situation will help the digital business so our company now is moving into building data centers because we have digital uh things happening digital innovation is taking place today we are talking over the digital media and over a period of time education is also taking the online platform which is such a big change my lecture today is also on an online platform this new technology is going to change also the way that we conduct education for instance over a period of years as you get into industry in commerce into business or whatever else you plan to do today it will be much much easier to have continuing education because all the education is now available on the online platform and plenty of this is now going to happen over a period of years i'm sure you dealt with coursera and all the other products which are there now available for online teaching and this will enable us to continue to learn new subjects new skills over a period of years the other thing which i have found over a period of years and i am now 71 uh is the fact that i enjoy being a learner all my life the fun is learning new things new ideas new technologies new thoughts and new methodologies in the good old days whatever you learnt in college in in your institution was something which would survive with you for 10 15 20 25 years today the education that you receive is certainly not going to last you beyond 5 to 7 years if you don't continue to learn all the time you will become out of date certain institutions do provide online and continuous learning for a long period of time after you have graduated in terms of certificate courses in terms of other lectures and others in terms of alumni meets and all these factors i'm sure will be available to you through iit roorkee so be a learner all your life and you will be able to do it sometimes people tell me that is it is difficult to make changes in life after you are grown a particular age i want to share with you a story of 
Captain Leela, Captain Nair of the Leela. He started the Leela chain of hotels at the age of 62 and over a period of 10 to 12 years set up five of the finest hotels in the world, in India, all over the country. This was something extraordinary. It was unbelievable that one could do it post 62 and without it having an Indian brand. It did not have to have any other brand which really did the work. So at any age you can do it, but it also indicates that you have to innovate and do new things whenever you can do it. One of the things which I have found over the period of time is, Mr. Hiranandani, how many times have you succeeded? And you are such a successful person, but how do you handle failure? I must shock you and tell you that 99% of successful people in life have failed many, many times, but they have learned to get up again and start walking and maybe start running and maybe start flying. But there are, there is hardly anybody in the world who is successful over a period of years who has not failed in some business or the other or in some matter or the other or in some project or the other. All this is something which we all need to know and do that part of it. I have a, the matter to do and some thoughts of ourselves. The first thought of myself is you have to learn to believe in yourself. Yes, I have handicaps. I don't have a background of this matter or business. I don't have an idea that I can take up this innovation. I don't have a thought that I can actually succeed. These are problems that we all face in terms of hesitancy to try new lines of thought. Yes, we need to prepare ourselves for anything new that we take. There is always going to be a risk profile for that. But the joys of success of people who are go out in the world in order to innovate, in order to create, in order to do new things, is the joy is tremendous. Second, you have a great advantage. Today, we have a lot of people who are willing to finance and invest into innovators, into people who want to do a startup. And I'm sure that IIT Rurki will enable you to meet such people and do it. A large number of very highly valuable businesses are technology driven. The ideas are simple, but on the back of it, we have technology. So let's take, for example, Airbnb, the holiday home maker. They don't own any single holiday home. They don't own a single hotel, but they are valued at billions of dollars simply because of the simple idea to give a room and to be able to assimilate on a technology program the customers and clients who want hotel rooms and the people who have built hotels and want to give it to these clients. Joining them together has created on the top of a technology platform a great business and a great valuation. Simple idea producing a great wonderful thing. You may not think of the same idea but you can always think of many such small ideas which can turn into do it on the top of technology. The other one which is uh, uh, of course uh, uh, very interesting in terms of uh, the do is the Amazon e-commerce which is now taking place which is a different sort of business that is there. And the best of all is the Uber and the Ola that you see in India. Both these people, both these institutions and companies have not a single investment in a single car or vehicle. But they run multi-billion dollar business on the basis of technology, on behalf of linking the customer who wants to travel from A to B and the technology to be able to communicate. So 
we have a lot of opportunities in the new world in order to move ahead and see what is this opportunity that you can have also uh, in this new world. My life has seen huge number of opportunities coming in India and the growth of India post COVID is also going to be a wonderful opportunity in India and we all look forward to it. People wonder, is India a land of opportunity? The answer is very much yes. So whether in personal life, in personal goals that you may want to do, in profession that you would like to work into, or in opportunities of being an entrepreneur and stepping out in the world, this is a great country and a huge opportunity. I wish I was younger simply because I see that the opportunities available today to you are so much more than what was available to me in terms of people investing into startups, people investing into new opportunities and the growth of India, which has created a GDP and a middle class and a development which is second to none in the entire world. I, am, uh, uh, I would like to stop now and uh, share with you many such ideas, but I would prefer that it should come through a question answer route rather than me continuing different thoughts of mine and different experiences that I wanted to put on the table. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to the questions that you may have to me on this day. Thank you, sir. It was really great hearing you.